three-time and defending I-500 winner Taylor Bunkie. Here we are. The winner. 74 of Bo Bunkie. 43 years old from Roseau, Minnesota, Gabe Bunkie. Checkered flag in the air. Bunkie Racing wins at the Sioux. Mandy, how you doing? Hi, I'm good. Nervous here. <laughs> well, how are you feeling? Doing good. At a kid. Calm and cool. Yeah, cool as a cucumber. <laughs> Your brother told you to just sit in the corner? Yeah. Wow. Well, brotherly love. Yeah, I suppose. Something like that. I didn't get lucky at all. Skill. It's just honest as you can work. Yes. <laughs> oh, Drew. Every time. Hey, I'm three, three last three times I've gone ahead, so. And two of them have been over a band or more, so. Uh, it's a science. You gotta look who's paying on last, who's high. There's a skill there. Yeah. Small bills, cash outs. Starting inside of row number two, this team is a former eight-time winner of the I-500. Aboard the number 74, Polaris Racing Polaris for Bunky Racing. Your starting rider, 41 years old, from Menescal, Alberta, Canada, the number 74 is Aaron Christensen. Secondary riders on that team, three-time winner of the I-500. 27 years old from Kindred, North Dakota, Taylor Bunky. And also on that team, 19 year old rookie from Roseau, Minnesota. Welcome, Bo Bunky. Look for Larry to wave that flag and get this 54th run of the International I-500. Here they come, fans. Up on your feet, wave them, and let's send them off here at the I-500. There's the machine. He'll take the turn into the infield. Watch around for that flag to come out as they approach the flag stand. Green flag wave, and we're underway. Troy G. Wall down on the inside in that cataract collision. Already cap the number 21. He'll push up. Slightly, oh, one rider over off turn one. Already met. Trouble. Trouble on turn number two. That was involved in the second and third row. Spanky, you know that Bunky Racing team, they are out for vengeance. Last year, not able to start the 2022 I-500 due, due to a crash in the Meyer Pro shootout, unable to take the green flag, but they are back out in full force with, with six-time winner Aaron Christensen, three-time winner Taylor Bunky, and that 19-year-old rookie cross-country specialist, Bo Bunky. Absolute stacked-up team, no question about that. Is Back. 
were made and now Taylor Bunky the former three-time winner of the I-500 jumping out to the race lead of course we know it's dad the legendary Gabe Bunky tied for the all-time career lead and wins in the I-500 both Gabe Bunky and the legendary Corey Davidson both with eight I-500 wins <laughs> Tell me about the sled and the track. Yeah, sled's good. We're in a happy spot with it. The track, yeah, it's coming along nicely. There's not a lot of ice out there, so it's going to get to the dirt here soon. There's bottoms pretty pretty dirty already, but it, you know it's all going to come together, I think. And uh, it changes a lot after they plow, so it's kind of like starting over again. A new new track again, away we go. Now, now you guys are a, a total favorite here. I know you guys are set for the end of the race here, more so than the first part of the race. So you got a lot of travel and everything. Do you know any changes you're going to make on the suspension between now and then? It all depends on how much we can keep it out of the dirt. We're having troubles to turn. That's that's the big thing, you know. And then once once we start having issues turning, then we start working on suspension stuff. I, I'm just going to ask you personally, would you rather have a tight sled or a loose sled on this track? I would go loose. Definitely loose. Yeah, I, I hear you. The loose, I think, is the fast way around this track, and you guys you guys got that figured out. Yeah, yeah tight, tight's a lot of work, right? A lot of work. So. Racing up. Oh, geez. Everybody needs Bo's enthusiasm in life. Yeah. <laughs> Just always happy to be there. Racing. Why can't you be happy? Race. Always a good day when we're racing. Johnny making his way back for some hard work down pit side. Great job. Great to have him here. I'm having a tough time babysitting, mind you, but here comes that 18 of Larry. He's laps down.
years have you been helping out at the Sioux? 13. 13? How about yeah. you? Oh. I like 10. 7. The best Seven. for 20. Okay. How about you, Dale? How, how many years have you been helping at the Sioux? Let's get you started on Oh, wow. Years, 18 years. Yeah, you're the OG. When Dylan was like two years old, he just put oh, yeah. Dylan in the bottom of uh, Gabe's pickup truck to hide him in it. Oh my, oh my gosh, my... You're the, guy, you're the guys we hate at the racetracks, right? Uh, my camera's fogging up because it's so cold. Make sure you can get down here. Yeah. Jeffy? Yes. How many years have you been helping at the Sioux? I've been coming here since 2000. And I rolled for a couple of years, so I've been helping for so I had kids probably 12, 12 years, so that's 11. Yeah. Do you like it? I love it. It's a little stressful. Yeah. 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 What's your favorite part of the suit? Oh, Jeff says the wins. Wins? Not gonna lie. Winning. <laughs> Not gonna lie. I know a lot of teams don't get that opportunity, but uh, it's the feel, the, the competition feel. You know, when you can be a team, it's pretty soon. Yeah, when everything works together, right? Yep. Aaron, what's your favorite part of the Sioux? Uh, towards the end of the day. The last part? Stretch when it gets rough? That's your favorite part? Not so stressful. But you see the light of it. Yeah. Bo, what's your favorite part of the suit? Well, I can't say racing it because I haven't raced it yet. <laughs> hey, you got rookie laps in. Yeah, I guess. I did get rookie laps. Yeah, you know what? Racing it. There <laughs> you go, Bo. Mandy, favorite part of the suit? I don't know if there's a favorite part. <laughs> That's kind of how I feel too. At the end of the day, when everybody's in, safe, safe. Best part of the day. Dale, do you have a favorite part? Um, just get back with the people that I see once a year. Yeah. Run and stuff like that. Get the community together. Yeah. The gangs back together. Get the Canadians in town. Hey, <laughs> what are you working on there? This is a uh, ski, ski jack for the sled. Okay. So with the snow and everything, it's slippery. So the aerodynamic we got in the front end of it, we pick it up and with the scoop. So we're putting some studs from Woody's traction. It's a good Woody's plug there. I hope that'll work pretty good. <laughs> we get the top and it holds it, but we need to do the sides. So when it grabs it, it holds it. So oh, okay. That's what we're up to. So yeah, Woody's traction works good. What's your favorite part of the suit? Winning. <laughs> Just about everybody in our team has said that so far. That and the people. Oh. I'll have to get some footage of that. And as that was happening, we have a new leader. The number 74, Bunky Racing Polaris. You kind of knew it was coming at some point for Bunky Racing. Yeah, I, I got I got a chance to talk to Aaron Christensen down there, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of confidence in that in that team there. Uh, they're set up, they're kind of just biding their time, and uh, I, I think Aaron's waiting for this thing to turn real rough. Uh, Marine and Power Sports, Pace Sled pulls in, green flag is out, we're back underway. The Nicolet paint green flag, and there is the Bunky Racing, number 74. Out in front, working on lap number 164. Up front. And the field makes their way down. There is that number 74, Bunky Racing Polaris. That team, eight-time winner. 
as they make their way through. That looks like young Bo Bunky on the sled, the 19-year-old rookie from Roseau, Minnesota. Good job out there. Out there. <laughs> as the 74 Bunky Racing Polaris is out in front, and that appears to be, let's confirm that if we can, we get a close-up shot of that 74. That looks like young Bo Bunky on there. I could, we could be wrong on that. Yeah, I, I can't tell, you know, under, under the helmet and everything, it's it's really tough to tell those Bunky Boys apart. And you being from the from the great state of Minnesota, um, John, you know the Bunky family very well. Gabe Bunky, of course, retiring here a couple of years back. Taylor Bunky now at the controls of that, carrying on that Bunky name. But how about this young Bo Bunky? But you talk about a cross country background. My goodness. I'll tell you, yeah, they uh, they are they are awesome. You know, both both Bo and Taylor have got thousands of miles of cross country racing under their belt. As the uh, Nicolay. Bank green flag comes back out. Bunky. start to really dial in that number 22 of Larry Young Jr. Obviously something amiss on that machine. We'll try to get a number as it goes by here, who that may be. Look at that 74 machine out front handling those bumps coming into turn one. He is really picking up the pace right now. Yeah, he went by Larry Young Jr. and uh, he's uh, got that Polaris. That's the Bunky Racing Polaris. And there goes Aaron Christensen. He leads the field down into that turn one area. Larry Young right on that back mud flap. The 74 Bunky Slate continues to pull away about a sled length down each stretch from that Langus machine. Aaron Christensen, uh, such a seasoned veteran riding these, uh, these sleds here. And uh, he excels when the conditions get rough. That's when he can really excel and really run this sled around here. And no one prepares a sled better than that bunky race team there and here he comes on the outside of the track now you watch him go under the bridge there I think Lungus might have gained a couple couple sled links on that straightaway there Lungus trying in the middle of the track you can see him shaking and uh, Joe Menez broadcast booth here what's the thoughts on that yeah thank you Spank this is a this is a treat to be up here normally I'm down on that pit road uh, all day long but this is kind of nice we continue on here, 245 laps in the book. Your leader in the Bunky Racing Players, Aaron Christensen, on board. Oh, Lap 258, your leader in the number 74, the Bunky Racing Players, Aaron Christensen, currently on board. <laughs> Now it's 
74 Bunky Racing Polaris is in third, 10 seconds back of the Jovich Racing Polaris. 
As uh, 74 battling with your defending I-500 race winners, the 28 Nelson Racing Polaris, Andy Wensloff now on that sled. I do believe it's Taylor Bunky now on the Bunky Racing sled. Yeah, I think it is Taylor. He's uh, certainly been marching up the ladder. You mentioned he's got her up in the third there. And, uh... Seven. As there you see, Lou Krentz heads back out. Yeah, a different rider uh, on top of that one. We'll get uh, we'll get the identity when he comes by here. But that number seven, that Krentz uh, Cubby machine machine back on the track here. As uh, daytime starts to close down here at the I-500, we've been six hours, 52 minutes, 51 seconds into this race since the green flag dropped and we've completed 377 laps here the i-500 we'll make it 378 as as we were talking there taylor bunky just kind of quietly slips by ryan spencer as well as andy wensloff and taylor bunky your race leader now in the 74 bunky racing polaris wow what a move that is is uh you you call it he's dialed him in and Made the pass, Monkey. Currently, that sled leads uh, the field around here. Field continues to negotiate around the legendary one mile oval here in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. As there you see Gabe Monkey making his way down the back stretch. Excuse me, Gabe, I want to go and keep on saying Gabe Monkey. Taylor Monkey, Gabe Monkey calling the shot. He hung up the helmet after the 2020. I-500 wow. said he wanted to quote unquote go out a winner as he was actually the third rider on the team that weekend Aaron Christensen was primary rider with Taylor Bunky the two rider Gabe was the, thir was the third rider and he went out a winner not too bad of a third rider to have on your team no but... Gabe Bunky your third rider <laughs> I mean <laughs> gosh <laughs> Yeah, let's, let's like going to play men's hockey here in Sault Ste. Marie and having Dylan Larkin come over and play center for you. I mean, yeah. my goodness. <laughs> and there is Taylor Bunky, a three-time winner of the I-500. We fully expect Matiscal, Alberta, Canada's Aaron Christensen to jump on that sled for the final 100 laps. That guy must have been a bull rider out in... Uh Alberta at the Calgary Stampede for him, well, to, for him to jump on that sled and hold on the way he does. I don't know. For those of you that don't know where Matiscal, Alberta is, it is, a, it is 60 minutes. Oh, boy. And before we get to that, Bunky Racing Taylor. Bunky has a hand up. Something to miss with the Bunky Racing Polaris. He's going to head pit side. Oh, my. It's the track. It's the track. Uh, you can see the track flopping away in the back of that machine. So it looks like that track's been shredded. I can see that, uh, you look at the backside of the tracks. So oh like, my, yeah. yeah indeed, that is the case. And what heartbreak for the Bunky Racing Team. Is that the mud And flap? that is Aaron Christensen actually on the sled. Hang on now, that track, is that, is that the mud flap? It looks like the outside of the track shredded. I'd be willing to bet that the track is, is shredded on that Bunky Racing Polaris. And that was Christensen. Got on right before that last pit stop. Christensen was able to jump on, but heartbreak for the Bunky Racing Polaris. Oh yeah, that you can see it.
day and what happened to your sled? The day was going pretty good. Um, the track was starting to go away, which we were kind of expecting, you know, kind of like there was some pretty unusually warm temperatures up here to build a track. Um, but it was holding up pretty good and we started to get down to the dirt. Um, started to get rough, which we knew going into the race, we just had to bide our time and kind of take it easy, uh, let things shake out. And as we were reaching that 400 mark, we were kind of coming into our own and getting ready to start pushing hard. So the sled was working really good. We started to lean on it just a little bit here, and, you know, lap 350, 360, and then had a little incident with the track. We uh, unfortunately lost our the outside belt of our track, so that took us out for the day. And you know, unfortunate, but it happens. And we've seen it happen before, so. Hopefully, we can come back next year with a little better luck. Yeah, well, you, uh, you guys have been really successful here, and uh, we were down in turn and three there, uh, Dwayne Bauer and I watching, and, and uh, you guys seem to be uh, bringing the mail there uh, just uh, prior to the incident. Um, that's usually the case, though, for the Bunky Squad. Uh, around uh, the 400 mark, uh, they are starting to bring the mail, and uh, everybody else is... Uh, I'm on the lookout because they know you're going to be there. <laughs> yeah, that uh, we were starting to crank it up, and unfortunately, we won't be able to push for yeah. the last hundred like we usually do. So, good luck to the teams out there, and hope they have a good, safe race. We'll see who comes away with it this year. Hey, well, it's uh, been a pleasure, and uh, I know we'll see you back. Um, that's a definite, and uh, yeah. Um, uh, Good luck the rest of the season uh, racing. I know you've seen you guys do pretty good over there at Eagle River and some of those uh, Minnesota races. Yeah, thank you. Yep, we'll definitely be back. You know, this one is a sweet spot for us. Uh, we really like coming out here and racing this event, so I'm sure you can count on us being back for this one. All right, guys, that's uh, Taylor Bunky with uh, with Bunky Racing, the 74 team, and uh, unfortunate luck, and uh, they're out of this year's I-500. Camera's been down here. Tent, no, actually, I, I did bring it in. I found some Bunky fans in the beer tent, but I've been wondering where you've been. Up top, making calls, Doug. Oh, we hear you. Oh, you are important, <laughs> Levi. You're important. you like down there? Is it more, do you e upgraded from generator tech? The scaffolding tech, the scaffolding tech. Yeah. Well, what, where did the pop of pizzazz fall into that? Oh, uh, well, I'm is that a right oh, that's a consistent. You're always pop of pizzazz. Are you gonna hook your generator up to the pizzazz like separately? I don't know why. We got, we got an electric heater going. Yeah. Why? But this thing's popping. Oh, yeah, I can run a cord here. Why not? It's been running now. Yeah, he hit that bump in the middle of the turn. Yeah, we seen him definitely. Jay Middlestead. He was through the corner and he hit the bump in the middle. Oh shoot! Oh yeah. Like he was relaxed. Where is he? He's already through. Definitely has this. And we never like going over it. Jesus. Yeah. Well, we might have to run our monitors. <laughs> I'm just sweating, too. I just have missed you all day. No, I'm trying to think of stuff to say on that camera. What? I've had no Levi one-liners yet. No, all I can say is it's a good thing we don't do this for a living. Because it's a good thing we do it because we love it. Because you know what I thought about? The first thing I thought about when I, when I found out what happened was, uh, well, hey, we got next week. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah, the trouble is... It's Daniel Ainley, but... That's all I gotta say. You know, you're searching for a line, and if, yeah. if you pick the wrong one, it's... Oh, uh, I don't... I don't think so. <laughs> we eat because we, we try to eat to make ourselves happy. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, we're sad. Debbie, what do you think of your first suit? Oh, it's great. Just <laughs> wish Taylor would have won. Yeah, that's okay. Maybe next year. <laughs> Kelly, are you having fun? <laughs> Finish, ladies. That was intense. Yeah. Harley? Why can't everybody just play night? <laughs> <laughs> play night. Nice. We are stumbling. 